Hi, I'm Stuart and welcome to Sarnet Television. We're here at something a little unusual. This is a, a 1959 Ford. Nick is a gentleman that very kindly brought this over to us here at Sarnet.com. What model yeah, is this particular model, vehicle? Custom 300. It is the entry level for the Ford. Uh, it's not the Galaxy or the, or the uh, Fairlane. Uh, the uh, car uh, has the not all the original paint. Parts of the car were damaged in the 60s. It's set in the dark for 35 years. Um, for car people, it's most commonly known as a barn find. Okay, well you have got some images here. We're gonna take a quick look at those images. Surely. Well, when we opened the garage door, and I, and I have known about these cars for about 25 years. I never wanted the Ford. I always wanted the Buick. It's a 1950 Buick Riviera, the second year for the Rivieras. And the car is actually under this mass here. The Ford was ahead of this car in the garage. The Buick was parked in 1974. The Ford was parked in 1973. And a slow accumulation of boxes and debris and whatever, all collectibles I'm sure, wow. uh, were placed on top. This is what the car looked like when it came out. Mm -hmm. The daylight at last is my attempt at humor. Yes. But I was surprised at uh, the condition of the paint. Right. And I had already sold the car. Uh, I backed out of the deal. Uh, this is washed, rubbing compound, and Meguiar Step 2 and Step 3 wax. Fantastic. Love their product. Right. All the Meguiars in the world wasn't going to help the, the cylinders. It right. sat there for 35 years with a blown head gasket, so it had water and antifreeze and number five and six cylinders. Right. We bored it out at 80,000 silver, and as I have on the sign here, with enough money, everything old can be new again. <laughs> Great. You also have here, by the looks of it, a, a menu that would this date to that menu. time? This is a menu from Yaws. Yaws was a favorite cruise-in place in the Hollywood district. Right. Now, Hollywood, of course, that being in Oregon, not the Hollywood in California. Okay. Let's, let's turn the sign around real quick, Nick, and take a look at the deputy who really is, besides yourself, the person who allows us to have this vehicle here today. Can you fill me a bit in about well, this gentleman? Don Lehman uh, started volunteering with the city of Portland right out of high school did that for a time then he went to Multnomah County right uh, Multnomah County is uh, the area around Portland Oregon he uh, volunteered with that agency for 22 and a half years uh, they were supplied uh, uh, uniforms weapons uh, they were given the sirens lights and radios but the reserve officers had to supply their own cars okay and in many cases four or five individuals would get one car they would outfit that and whoever was on duty would use that particular car. Well, let's take a look inside the, the car, but before we go inside, of course, let's start under the, uh, under the hood or the bonnet for those folks who come from overseas and take a look at the engine that this particular vehicle has. Now, one of the things unusual about this car is for three years, Ford used the hood that opened forward. Oh, okay. They went away from that because they were very dangerous. If you had front end damage, this came through the windshield and caused uh, a lot of problems. Sure. So again, something that's somewhat unique that you don't get in cars today. Okay. Now most people expect to see a large interceptor engine in this. Okay. Uh, last summer I met the individual that actually sold this car to Don. And he remembered Don, he remembered the car. He was a young salesman at Harlan Griffin Ford, which has long since gone here in Portland. Uh, this is unique in the fact that it has a, a downdraft carburetor, but the air cleaner lays on the side because there wasn't room under the hood because uh, of the, uh, the uh, styling of the car. Uh, we put a considerable amount of money in this and uh, uh, redoing gaskets and uh, seals and whatever in the car. I should mention too that this car, along with the 50 Buick Riviera, were given to me. I was a friend and, and did a lot for the family uh, over the years. And uh, since then, I've put $9,000 in my free car. Wow, that's good. But we've had so much fun with this, and it's been very well received by the uh, law enforcement community, and we're just having a great time with it. Under the hood, we had a 6-volt system and a 12-volt system. The siren, which is to the side now, used to mount over on top of the engine. There were two generators, one for 6 and one for 12, and then a PA horn. Okay. So, so what we have in here, this is a federal signal uh, air siren. This particular model, I know, is, is no longer made. They, they, of course, it's, one could argue that it's a baby Q. The fire apparatus today still use uh, federal signal grinders or Q sirens. 
and uh, just now we'll have the opportunity to turn that on. I would like to point out one other thing here, and that is that, uh, as I mentioned, the equipment, the used equipment, was made available to the reserve officers. So the radios that are in the trunk that we'll look at later, um, they are six volt, and they were in whatever squad cars early on. Don had these radios in a 51 Ford, a 56, and then they remained in the 59. And that's all documented on the board that the radios are fastened to. He was great for duplication and, and uh, uh, making sure that uh, everything was uh, you know, registered. Sure. So we have a lot of knowledge.